Hi folks, David Raring here again with InformTrades.com and today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson we continued our discussion on what moves the Forex market with a look at how capital flows are measured through something called the capital account. In today's lesson we're going to combine what we've learned about the current account with what we learned in yesterday's lesson about the capital account with a look at something which is known as the balance of payments. So let's get started. As we discussed briefly in our last lesson, it is the interaction of flows of money relating to international trade and investment that ultimately determines the value of a currency over the long term. When demand strengthens for the exports of a particular country and or investments by foreigners into that country increase, then all else being equal, a currency should strengthen. Conversely, when demand weakens for the exports of a particular country and or investments by foreigners into that country falls, then all else being equal, a currency should weaken. It is the interaction of the current account and the capital account that measures this, and when combined, these make up a country's balance of payments. The balance of payments is very simply the total transactions by a country with all other countries in the world, or in other words, the combination of both trade flows and capital flows into one report. By following a country's balance of payments and its related indicators, an FX trader can gain great insight into the potential future direction of a country's currency. To help understand this better, let's look at the example of the U.S. dollar. As we've discussed in previous lessons, the United States has run a very large current account deficit for quite some time, meaning that the country has imported way many more goods and services than it has exported. As this chart of the U.S. dollar index shows, however, for a number of years the U.S. dollar continued to strengthen despite this large current account deficit. As you can see here, Going up into 2000, although the U.S. ran a persistent current account deficit, the currency overall continued to strengthen before starting to sell off from late 2000 forward. Now I'm making some pretty significant generalizations here for simplicity's sake, but there are two major reasons that fundamental traders will point to as reasons for this. Number one is that uh, and, and this is starting to change somewhat, but there has for many years been a strong demand for U.S. dollars because the U.S. dollar is the currency of choice for many major central banks to hold as their reserve currency. Japan and China are the biggest examples of this. This creates a demand for dollars on the capital flow side of the equation that helped to offset the, the persistent current account deficit going into 2000. Number two is, as most of you will remember, the NASDAQ top, which happened in March of 2000, was preceded by a major bull market in the United States and one in which foreign investors were active participants. As we learned about in our lesson on capital flows, this creates a large demand for dollars, further helping to offset the large current account deficit. After the sell-off in the NASDAQ, however, Foreign investors fled the U.S. stock market along with a lot of other traders and investors. As there was no longer as much foreign capital flowing in to offset the large current account deficit, the U.S. dollar began to weaken. As the dollar began to weaken, this also created a chain reaction with the central banks which held the dollar as their reserve currency, who started to diversify into the euro and other currencies, further exacerbating the dollar sell-off. This created a situation where the current account deficit in the United States remained large, creating a market surplus of U.S. dollars from an international trade standpoint, and the inflows of capital into the U.S. stock and bond markets began to fall, lowering the, de lowering the demand for dollars, which was offsetting the current account deficit. While it's, not a, while it's not important to understand all the intricate details at this point, what you do need to understand is that in order to have a feel for the long-term fundamentals of a currency, it is important to have a general understanding of what is happening from both a trade flows and a capital flows standpoint and how these two things interact with one another. 
As we will learn in coming lessons, all fundamentals with currencies can be related back to these two basic concepts. So for your homework assignment tonight, for this lesson, I encourage you to consider the following question. As the value of the U.S. dollar falls, what effect, if any, should this have on the large current account deficit in the United States and why? If you'd like to post your answer in the comment section of this lesson on informedtrades.com for discussion, this is something that I always encourage. That's our lesson for today. In our next lesson, we'll look at some additional examples of how trade flows and capital flows are moving the market right now uh, so we can have a better understanding of both and can generate some potential trading ideas there as well. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And good luck with your trading.